Those still watching ways. Um, World Religion Day is an observance initiated in 1950 by the National Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'i of the United States, celebrated worldwide on the third of, on the third Sunday in January each year. The day is for the celebration of the oneness of religion and its role in human society. <laughs> it does play a powerful role. Religion, mm -hmm. it does. Re religion like shapes your mindset. So if I'm a Christian, I know this. These are the values as a Christian, and you're expected to live according to that. If you're a Muslim, these are the va uh, values you find in the Quran, and you're expected to live by that. So it, it's a huge um, identity framer. Mm. So, it's, but you know, this religion is not one. It's not religion. It yeah. So, I mean, it's nice to hear that there's a World Religion Day where you mm. can actually take religion in its wholeness in terms of what it is. It gives people direction, mm. it speaks to culture, who you are, how you are. I mean, it's the foundation of everything. So, yeah. to be able to see that all religions are celebrated in one day is uh, quite mm. good and you know, fantastic to see. Religion well, will be accepted by people to celebrate this one religion, I mean, the religion, in, I mean, for all religions in one day? I don't think it's a bad thing. I think if you have an open mind, so this is where it speaks mm. to how some people have used religion in a negative way. But I think that if it's just embracing the fact that we all have different faiths, why not? Well, I hope people I don't will. think we could ever have world religion, though. Hmm. No. Like one world religion? I don't think we can have it. No, never. <laughs> it's not possible. Too many beliefs. Well, you know, we, we, we're um, trending now. We're, we're Niger the rate at which our population is growing. Mm. Uh, in 30 years, Nigeria will have the most Muslims and the most Christians in the world. In the world, yes. Wow, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday. Wow. All right, so what caught your attention in the news? Sansi, let's go with Okay, you. so uh, starting with the drama going on in Imo State, apparently between APC and PDP, typical, uh, February 2019, during the elections, Emeka Hedio House pronounced the uh, governor it came out as the governor of Imo State, but um, uh, last week, I mean this, this this past week, there's been protests on the streets of Owe, which is the Imo capital, and um, PDP supporters are saying that it is wrong for the Supreme Court to overrule the election and put um, Hope Uzodima of APC as the new governor of Imo State. And well, somebody had to bring in the emotional angle. Henry Muba, House of Representatives, said that women in the state are devastated, and the police had to barricade the area because they don't want, like, they, according to them, they're being proactive and not reactive, which is applaudable. But then again, I think Henry, uh, the police made a very valid point. I mean, in the PDP, they're protesting. What would happen if APC decides to protest as well? Hmm. So, but it's a case of there is pain on one side and there is joy on the other side. So that's the uh, current state of as, things. I mean, justice. I've talked so um, much about this Please story tell me, I beg. That I need to I understand it. how someone goes from number four mm -hmm. to number one. Hmm. And simply because the votes in 388 polling units that were excluded by INEC um, have now been accepted by the Supreme Court. Fair enough. But please, if you accept the count for one candidate from 300, what about the count the for the other parties in those places? So without taking into account all the votes for every single party in those 388 polling votes. How is he the rightful governor? That's where I see, I mean, you can't go any higher than the Supreme Court, but really and truly, that's mm. just the question that's on my mind. Whether that's what I've been asking. this is yeah. looking like it is, you know, favoring... Like the result you're yeah. manipulated yeah, or something. It, because for me, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. I'm, I've tried to wrap my head around this. Um, this I, for some strange reason, you know what I say? I can't be bothered. You know, at this point, it's Nigeria. Just give up because it doesn't make any sense. Like you know, Uti rightly said, spread it. If you truly want to say, okay, yes, so let everybody's votes be counted mm. and let us see the true situation of, of of things. You can't just come out from fourth position and all of a sudden. And suddenly, you're, you you're, know, you're the first. The floor is with INEC. So I mean, the onus is on INEC to prove and show what they've done. The Supreme Court is just there to adjudicate on the evidence that's presented to them. To them, yeah, but does based get... on, you know, because the law has no emotions. Exactly. Based on evidence, this is they this have is to go with it. Yeah, so but this doesn't is INEC's get, mess. Doesn't it get quite tiring that every time in the history of Nigeria, I've never seen an election where we pronounce someone the winner and there is no, like in the whole 36 um, states, there is not one case of, oh, maybe Rivers, this one is not the pre the governor, or that one is overruled, or we're going to court. No, but, all, we have, but for all elections, and yeah. the aggrieved party have the right to take the... Um, INEC and whatever to court. to court all elections. I understand that. You know, so saying... if you feel cheated, that you feel that oh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I want the votes uh, fair and square, then go to court. So it is the court that would now 
based on the evidence, come out to say, okay, you know what, this is the rightful governor and this is not, you know, like that. So no, I'm just this, saying yeah. that if we get to a place where, of course, you have a, a right to protest and say, I completely disagree with it and go to court. But can we get to a place where it's just plain and obvious and transparent and you're like, I lost. Well, can we ever get to that point? We Until might, you make we might politics not. less attractive. Yes, we might not get there. Because huh. <laughs> it's a do or die matter. At yeah. the moment. Hmm. <laughs> what, did you, what did you find for us? Uh, so mine is a quick update, really. So if you've been following the Megxit, uh, Harry and Meghan story. I uh, love them. them. I love them too. Love them. You know, I thought I didn't really, I didn't really care about them before. But when you see a man trying to protect his wife and his family, how can you not love him? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're coming to some sort of, um, they've come to an agreement. So they had a summit with the royal family and they've agreed to step back mm -hmm. as senior members of the royal family so they will no longer represent the queen officially, which means they will be turning down or they will be uh, no longer collecting a salary from taxpayers' mm. funds. Mm. There was a lot of uh, talk around the amount of money that was spent to renovate their official residence in the UK. Mm -hmm. So they will be paying back the $2.4 million uh, pounds, which is about $3.1 million. Yeah. They'll be paying that back uh, and then they'll be paying rent in commercial commercial terms, so it's about £360,000 they'll be paying in rent. Uh, yeah. For a property that they only plan to spend a few weeks in, maybe a year, because they want to spend more time in North America. But um, the main thing is they won't be allowed, or they've agreed, they haven't been stripped of their titles, which is the ability to mm -hmm. use his, his and her Royal Highness. Royal Highness. They won't use it officially. They will just be going by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. So now they have to go and earn their own money. They will still get private funds from, because mm. uh, he also gets a, a salary from his father. So he'll still get that. Uh, but now they're free to go and, you know, But she just, she just, she signed, she a just deal signed a deal with, with Disney. Disney. Yes. <laughs> and that's a lot of money. Yes. That's not a joke. It's no joke. But, you know, I think from the taxpayer's perspective, mm. the idea was, oh, how are we going to fund this? So one of the things that was a sore point was security. So if you want to live in the UK, you want to live all over the place, mm -hmm. the taxpayer still has to pay for your security. And that bill is about £7.6 million pounds to protect Two and a half people, no, three people. Three, three, people. <laughs> so three, three people. people. So it's a huge, it's a huge cost. Mm. The the official statement, uh, the palace has refused to comment on security because they say they have their own independent processes. Well, you know what is really exciting for me though is that the queen decided to you know what allow them to family first be, yes family first you know this would have gone south mm. if it was going to be oh no you cannot mm. but she just said you know what but i you think know, I, I i like what you guys are planning to do mm. go, go ahead but I you know i i think the uh, queen elizabeth is a very wise woman I, she studies trend and she knows that if i'm i mean she knows the history of the royal family especially when it comes to um harry and you know princess diana and all that so she knows that with the way people love harry they're going to go against harry you're starting a problem in the royal family and it's not going to end well. So I think it was just the wisest thing to do. To do I yeah. send you off in peace. You still have your titles. Mm -hmm. you know, but you choose, yeah. yeah. I think she's learned very well from the she has learned learned a lot. First. She would they stood a lot to lose and I actually yeah. thought she was going to go with duty over family. So this for me was really it was good. Opinion. It was family mm -hmm. over duty, yeah. Alright, so my story is uh I don't know what to call it, right? Um the director general of NAVDAC, that's Mojisola Adeyeye. Um, she's um, calling out a lot of um, companies that are producing products like milk, sugar, salt, and oil, mm -hmm. saying that most of these products do not have vitamin A in them. And so for all those companies, they are going to be clamping down and shutting down a lot of if they do not follow those rules. Because, of course, we know vitamin A is good for eyesight. We don't want to have people going blind. Like <laughs> coma know? and all that. Yeah, so I, I'm happy that she's... she's um, She's going at it, but you know, I am, um, cause she was talking some part, she was talking about importation and all of that. Mm. All of those things, they are still a bit um, shroudy for me because um, you close borders, yet we still find all of these things on, on the shelves in different <laughs> How supermarkets. How does it happen? You know, and we, I, I was saying to someone that we first of all condemn our local, um, for instance, for oil, we condemn our local oil and say, no, there's cholesterol mm. and all of that. And in, because we want to import other products to mm. sell, you know, so if we actually go back to the roots, the natural oils that we have, the palm oil locally yeah. made 
and I think the, the groundnut oil, those ones are very, very rich in vitamin A. So it's just to tell the people that patronize the local manufacturers I, as, a, as a farmer. I, <laughs> I completely agree. How did they get past time. them in the first place? Do you understand? How did they get past yeah, them? Yeah, NAFDAQ. Every you know, product should have should a NAFDAQ have number. NAFDAQ number. So how does it have a NAFDAQ number? So is she exposing a gap? Or is she saying there's a problem with the NAFTA? Because they're two different things. Mm. I could give you my NAFTA number because you tell me you're going to put vitamin A in, and then you don't have vitamin A NAFTA problem. Or is it the process of actually obtaining the NAFTA number? But I think they test mm -hmm. these products. Because when you want to get NAFTA approval, you're supposed to take your products to go and get tested. Mm -hmm. So essentially, she's telling me that maybe they've not tested them. That's my point. So yeah. it's like if you give them NAFTA number, where's how, how have they gone around the process of not Without getting the, the, the vitamin A in, in them? Nigeria is well, the place Nigerians. Yeah. Yes, and you should just take. Well, when you're going to the stores, just make sure you look through and be sure that these things are. But then mm -hmm. again, it's only God that can save somebody That's because they can, like the, they can write it you on. They can write it on. You can help yourself still. Well. <laughs> Right. So that's all we can take on this segment. Um, like we said earlier, we're discussing Naramali today, and Bukola Lamid joins us after the break. Please stay with us.